Joseph de Maister Joseph Marie, Comte de Maister was a French-speaking Savoyard philosopher, writer, lawyer, and diplomat, who advocated social hierarchy and monarchy in the period immediately following the French Revolution. Despite his close personal and intellectual ties with France, Maister was throughout his life a subject of the King of Piedmont Sardinia, whom he served as member of the Savoy Senate, ambassador to Russia, and minister of state to the court in Turin. A key figure of the counter-enlightenment, Maester regarded monarchy as both a divinely sanctioned institution and as the only stable form of government. He called for the restoration of the House of Bourbon to the throne of France and for the ultimate authority of the Pope in temporal matters. Maester argued that the rationalist rejection of Christianity was directly responsible for the disorder and bloodshed which followed the French Revolution of 1789. Maester was born in 1753 at Chambéry, in the Duchy of Savoy, which at that time was part of the Kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia, ruled by the House of Savoy. His family was of French and Italian origin. His grandfather André Maester, whose parents Francesco and Margarita Maester originated in the county of Nice, had been a draper and councilman in Nice, and his father François Xavier, who moved to Chambéry in 1740, became a magistrate and senator, eventually receiving the title of Count from the King of Piedmont Sardinia. His mother's family, whose surname was Desmets, were from Rumilly. Joseph's younger brother, Xavier, who became an army officer, was a popular writer of fiction. Joseph was probably educated by the Jesuits. After the revolution, he became an ardent defender of their order increasingly associating the spirit of the revolution with the Jesuits' traditional enemies, the Jansenists. After completing his training in the law at the University of Turin in 1774, he followed in his father's footsteps by becoming a senator in 1787. A member of the progressive Scottish Rite Masonic Lodge at Chambury from 1774 to 1790, Maester originally favoured political reform in France, supporting the efforts of the magistrates in the parliaments to force King Louis XVI to convene the Estates General. As a landowner in France, Maester was eligible to join that body, and there is some evidence that he contemplated that possibility. He was alarmed, however, by the decision of the States General to combine clergy, aristocracy and commoners into a single legislative body, which became the National Constituent Assembly. After the passing of the August Decrees on August 4, 1789 he decisively turned against the course of political events in France. Maester fled Chambéry when it was taken by a French revolutionary army in 1792, but unable to find a position in the royal court in Turin, he returned the following year. Deciding that he could not support the French-controlled regime, he departed again, this time for Lausanne, in Switzerland. There he discussed politics and theology at the Salon of Madame de Stahl, and began his career as a counter-revolutionary writer, with works such as Lettre d'un royaliste Savoisine, Discours à Madame la Marquise Costa de Beauregard, Sur la vie et la mort de son fils and Cinq paradoxes à la Marquise de Nav. From Lausanne, Maester went to Venice, and then to Colliery where the King of Piedmont Sardinia held the court and the government of the kingdom after French armies took Turin in 1798. Maester's relations with the court at Colliery were not always easy and in 1802 he was sent to St. Petersburg in Russia, as ambassador to Tsar Alexander I. His diplomatic responsibilities were few, and he became a well-loved fixture in aristocratic circles, converting some of his friends to Roman Catholicism and writing his most influential works on political philosophy. Maester's observations on Russian life, contained in his diplomatic memoirs and in his personal correspondence, were among Tolstoy's sources for his novel War and Peace. After the defeat of Napoleon and the restoration of the House of Savoy's dominion over Piedmont and Savoy, Maester returned in 1817 to Turin, and served there as magistrate and minister of state until his death. He died on February 26, 1821 and is buried in the Jesuit Church of the Holy Martyrs. In consideration Sir La France, 
Maester claimed that France has a divine mission as the principal instrument of good and evil on earth. He interpreted the revolution of 1789 as a providential event, the monarchy, the aristocracy and the ancien regime in general, instead of directing the influence of French civilization to the benefit of mankind, had promoted the atheistic doctrines of the 18th century philosophers. He claimed that the crimes of the reign of terror were the logical consequence of enlightened thought, as well as its divinely decreed punishment. In his short book essay sur le principe générateur des constitutions politiques et des autres institutions humaines, Maester argued that constitutions are not the product of human reason, but come from God, who slowly brings them to maturity. After the appearance in 1816 of his French translation of Plutarch's treatise on the delay of divine justice in the punishment of the guilty, in 1819 Maester published Du Papa, the most complete exposition of his authoritarian conception of politics. According to Maester, any attempt to justify government on rational grounds will only lead to unresolvable arguments about the legitimacy and expediency of any existing government, and that this, in turn, will lead to violence and chaos. Maester therefore argued that the legitimacy of government must be based on compelling but non-rational grounds, which its subjects must not be allowed to question. Maester went on to argue that authority in politics should therefore derive from religion, and that in Europe this religious authority must ultimately lie with the Pope. What was novel in Maester's writings was not his enthusiastic defense of monarchical and religious authority per se, but rather his arguments concerning the practical need for ultimate authority to lie with an individual capable of decisive action, as well as his analysis of the social foundations of that authority's legitimacy. In his own words, which he addressed to a group of aristocratic French émigrés, you ought to know how to be royalists. Before, this was an instinct, but today it is a science. You must love the sovereign as you love order, with all the forces of intelligence. Maester's analysis of the problem of authority and its legitimacy foreshadows some of the concerns of early sociologists such as Comte and Saint Simon. In addition to his voluminous correspondence, Maester left two books that were published posthumously. Soirées de Saint Petersburg is a theodicy in the form of a Platonic dialogue, in which Maester argues that evil exists because of its place in the divine plan, according to which the blood sacrifice of innocence returns men to God, via the expiation of the sins of the guilty, Maester sees this as a law of human history, as indubitable as it is mysterious. Examined a law philosophie de Bacon, is a critique of the thought of Francis Bacon, whom Maester considers to be the fountainhead of the destructive enlightened thought. Maester, together with the Anglo-Irish statesman and philosopher Edmund Burke, is commonly regarded as one of the founders of European conservatism, but since the 19th century, Maester's authoritarian, throne and altar conception of conservatism has declined in influence in comparison with the more liberal conservatism of Burke. Maester's skills as a writer and polemicist however ensure that he continues to be read. Matthew Arnold, an influential 19th century critic, while comparing Maester's style with his Irish counterpart, wrote that. Joseph de Maester is another of those men whose word, like that of Burke, has vitality. In imaginative power he is altogether inferior to Burke. On the other hand his thought moves in closer order than Burke's, more rapidly, more directly, he has fewer superfluities. Burke is a great writer, but Joseph de Maester's use of the French language is more powerful, more thoroughly satisfactory, than Burke's use of the English. It is masterly, it shows us to perfection of what that admirable instrument, the French language, is capable. The Catholic Encyclopedia of 1910 describes his writing style as strong, lively, picturesque, and that his animation and good humor temper his dogmatic tone. He possesses a wonderful facility in exposition, precision of doctrine, breadth of learning, and dialectical power. Alphonse de Lamartine, though a political opponent, admired the splendor of his prose. That brief, nervous, lucid style, stripped of phrases, robust of limb, did not at all recall the softness of the 18th century, nor the declamations of the latest French books, it was born and steeped in the breath of the Alps, it was virgin, it was young, it was harsh and savage, it had no human respect, 
it felt its solitude, it improvised depth and form all at once. That man was new among the enfants du siècle. Emile Faget described Maester as a fierce absolutist, a furious theocrat, an intransigent legitimist, apostle of a monstrous trinity composed of Pope, King, and Hangman, always and everywhere the champion of the hardest, narrowest, and most inflexible dogmatism, a dark figure out of the Middle Ages, part learned doctor, part inquisitor, part executioner. Amongst those who admired him was the poet Charles Baudelaire, who described himself a disciple of the Savoyard counter-revolutionary, claiming that he had taught him how to think. George saint Brie called him unquestionably one of the greatest thinkers and writers of the 18th century. Maester also exerted a powerful influence on the Spanish political thinker Juan Donoso Cortés and, later, on the French anti-Semitic monarchist Charles Maurras and his counter-revolutionary political movement Action Française. According to Carolina Armenturas, Maester's writings influenced not only conservative political thinkers, but also the utopian socialists. Early sociologists such as Saint Simon and Comte explicitly acknowledged the influence of Maester on their own thinking about the sources of social cohesion and political authority. He had not been born French, and did not desire to become French, and that, never having set foot in the lands conquered by France, he could not have become French. This philosopher was a politician, this Catholic was an Italian, he foretold the destiny of the House of Savoy, he supported the end of the Austrian rule, he has been, during this century, one of the first defenders of independence. <laughs>